in this episode of StreamerBot Bytes, an easy import for chat actions with a twist. The actions themselves, like a simple hug. But the twist comes in with the concept of consenting. Either you don't consent yourself to an action, or the recipient doesn't consent. We have a way of looking at the current status of what you do and don't allow, and then toggling those commands, either using all to consent them all or individually. And then finally, showing that when you have the consent both ways, the action can go ahead. Hello, and welcome to Streamer Bot Bytes, where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome Streamer Bot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, sample import code will be provided to make it even easier to get started and to add functionality to your stream. Let's get started with the topic for this video. So to implement this system, we just import the code, so that's from pastebin. Paste that in there. Takes a little moment sometimes to process. You can see here, all the import actions are in there. Now what we need to do is we need to set up a command for consent to change the consent options that we want per action and commands for each of the actions below. So I'm going to start off with StreamerBot 0.1.3, which is going to be similar to earlier versions, but I'll also show you how this will look for the actions in 0.1.4. So I'm going to start off with the consent command. So in commands, right click add, put in consent. This is, an, um, this is action for everyone to be able to use because everyone will be able to define what they do and don't want used um, from themselves or to themselves. So we don't need to set any permissions. We set the action. You may want to have a user call down um, of a few seconds. That might be something to consider. Um, it's also worth noting, consent with no space on there. I will talk about that in a moment. So let's add in say, the first command in 0.1.3 and I'll do the rest in 0.1.4. I'm going to use exclamation mark hug. Now, what I'm going to do as a suggestion for best practice is use a space after that because hug is never going to be used on its own. You could have a command where it is used on its own. Um, you could have that separate to this. So maybe so uh, the app user wants to get a hug themselves. So I'm going to put that as that action. Again, you might have a few seconds call down here. And again, everyone can use it so you don't need to change your permissions. You might also want to add an additional command. For example, hugs space. So if someone puts hugs against a particular user, that will pick up on it that way. Again, you might have a cooldown. You don't need to change permissions. And now in 0.1.4, we are going to go to add a command. Again, this is uh, going to be very similar, but you can see the dialogue has changed here, but the command can be a list of command. So if consent, we just want consent the action here is for consent. Cooldowns as before, maybe five seconds, and that's added in. Now what's different with 0.1.4 is we can do hug space and exclamation hugs space in the same single uh, dialogue here. It makes it a bit easier for us to implement this. So again, we select hug, give us a short cooldown. If the action is on cooldown, you can define an action. So you maybe send a message to Twitch saying, 
you can't use that command again yet. Uh, for me, since it's a, such a short down cooldown command, I've decided myself not to have a cooldown action on this, but it's worthwhile noting this uh, functionality here. So you see now, command is showing both the commands there. So cuddle, space, exclamation, cuddles, space again. The space is making sure that we're defining that there needs to be something passed along with the command. And we can go through here again. Permissions aren't really an issue with these because you want the whole uh, Twitch chat to continue. And we'll just do one more, just for now. Let me have a look which one I'm going to do. Yeah, let's do tickle. Pickle, space and tickles. Again, five seconds. So we need to repeat this for each of the actions. So um, I'm going to uh, quickly flip forward. And here we have all of the actions now added into the commands. Now if there's any of these you do not want, don't put the command in. And I'm going to show you how to actually change those actions themselves. Again, if you don't want any of them, select one of them, for example, and you can delete. So we're going to delete some of the more spicy ones. We're going to go then into the chat action consent below. So it says here in the comment, edit below action if you want to remove chat actions. Don't worry about all these um, values up here. Having the variable set will not impact the um, code. So we can edit into the code. And you'll see in here, remove line or lines below to remove spank. So once remove spank and whip, so we can remove every occurrence of those. So there's multiple occurrences. So we can get rid of those ones there. Again. These two we're going to remove. You could look at changing all the names across to have alternate commands in there as well. And you can look in here and basically duplicate every section. So if you see there's an error between the green lines, you can copy that and create a different command. And then we have two more sections to remove. So these are the big sections. And there we go. And now we have removed those two additional actions we don't want. Click on compile to make sure everything all works fine. It takes a little while. It says compile successfully. That's all fine. If that doesn't compile successfully, I would cancel uh, or use undo. Until it does. And then look at making sure you test removing again. So at the end, save and compile. And now we're ready to test. So now let's look at how this ends up in chat when we use it. I suggest we check consent first. So we can see the commands we've removed are no longer being reported there. We've got yeses across the board apart from lick and mo. So if I try to do any of the actions that are not allowed, both myself or the recipient user. It's going to check firstly if the recipient user allows that. So you can see here that StreamerBot doesn't allow it to be licked. But on, on the plus side, we can give StreamerBot uh, a good hug because it's doing an awesome job. We can turn around and say, for example, StreamerBot will allow a cuddle. But if we toggle that, I'll just show you the actual status after changing that. You can show it's off here. Just 
Huh? If we then try and cuddle Streamerbot. Well, Streamerbot will have the default um, setting to have there, even though I've made a typo there. <laughs> it's, uh, it says I need to consent to it first. So you can see that's fully working there. Um, all the actions are static. It's worthwhile mentioning the, the meme action, which is um, supplied by GeoSim. So thank you, Geo, for that. Uh, Geo's link is in the description below. He does some good stuff with Streamerbot. And it will pick a random actions. So sometimes it'll be something on the recipient, but sometimes it can be the other way around. Hopefully I've got enough time with that. And there we go. I've been TNT'd by Streamerbot. So that explains how to set up, configure, and test the chat actions in Streamerbot with these uh, add-in. So once you've imported it. At this point, you don't need to do any more work. Go and enjoy. The next part of this video, I'm going to go through and to explain how to um, how actually these work. So we can see here when we use a consent command, we define all user variables which are persistent with the default values. Because consent uses all of the values, we need to define them all. And so this is where we can have yeses or nos for the defaults. And as before we talked about, this is the code to go through. Let's walk through that code. So it checks for a blank input. So if it's a blank input, then it will just give us a report of each of the, the settings. So it looks at the gets a mode status for the particular user, sends that to a string. We're going to build up a string to send out as a single response. It's then getting the user variable of user to string, so for that specific user, and consent hug, and it puts it together in. So hug will be either yes or no. Then it adds in boop, tickle, meme, etc. So that's if we specify nothing at all in the input, so nothing after the command. If we do all, then what we do is we set those user variables to all yes. And then we notify chat that we've done that. Again, with none, setting all to no and letting chat know. If we then do consent hug, what we need to do is we need to look at the current value. So we get the user variable, if it's no, then we toggle it, toggle it on and we let chat know. Otherwise, which is else, we then set it to no and hugs off. And we will repeat that for all the other commands at the end. And finally, we return true to say we can continue processing the code if we want to. Let's now go through one of the chat actions. Let's pick on hug we get the target information from input. We do this because we want to enforce that people can't just do hug and then something that's like someone's name. We want to be respectful of what they're consenting to. So if that target user does not exist, we run the chat action fail invalid user error. If we skip to that, we see, sorry, the input is not a valid user is what we send back to chat. So that's what we send if it is not sent there. Other, otherwise, we can continue. We pull in the current consent for the target. So does the person we're running this action against allow this command? If not, we run the chat action fail no consent action. Because here, which is saying the target user, so who we're typed in against the command, does not allow it. Then we look at the consent self. So it looks at the person that's run the command 
what do they actually allow? If it's not been defined, again, the default value for that hug is yes. We put it onto consent self, and then we check using if. If that equals no, then we shouldn't be able to do an action on someone else that we don't allow to ourselves. Failing that, we have the message that gives a warm hug to target user. And we can easily edit this if you want it to be. If you want to expand on these actions, you can also potentially enable a sound effect or have some kind of visual interaction as well. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you'd like covered, please do let me know in the comments or also on Discord. Check my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. So the links to my Twitch, social media and to stream a bot can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide streamer bot content can be found in the description too. Finally, thank you so much to Nate for making a great bot. Please do consider supporting his Patreon, which is linked from streamer.bot.